Yo guys, welcome back to another episode of why I use Blender Octane. This one's going to be a short one. This one, I actually have a question that came in from one of my members in my Blender Octane School community. If you did not know, also seven day free trial. Come in, check it out for seven days. If you like it, stay. If you don't like it, see ya. He was asking a question. Is it possible to add LUTs into your viewport for Blender Octane? And actually it is. Here is a scene that I was working on the other day here. Um, I generated this scene basically. This was actually one of the, from my gum road, the Tokyo storefront here. Basically I was giving myself a challenge, 100 minutes to make a render done, finished at the 100 minute mark. So I quickly downloaded one of these assets that I basically, you guys can download this for free down on the link, down on the description at the Gumroad site. So I basically made a scene off of that image using, you know, the Ian Hubert slash photo bashing for textures slash, you know, work style. Back on topic, he wanted to know, can we add in LUTs? And yes, we can. So if I'm in my, my blender here and I hit in on the keyboard, this probably might look like this for you guys. We have here our camera imager and we have our octane post-processing. We want to scroll down camera imager. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to jump in here and you're going to see here, we scroll down, we'll have ICO I O C I O. This is where we'll load in our Ace uh, AGX and whatnot. But if you keep going down, we'll have tone mapping. And here is basically what it says: how to control our tone mapping. We have highlight compression, so I can con uh, control if the highlights are getting a little bit blown out too much. As you can see here, if we look right here, here's the highlights. And if I add a little bit of highlight compression, it kind of just knocks off that hot edge a little bit. There we go. We also have clip to white, which I don't really have anything over clipping, so that's not going to really show up. Then we have the order of the color uh, the tone mapping response gamma LUT and then you hear the word LUT because we can add in our own LUTs here is our gamma control first of all I can control my gamma right there I'm gonna go ahead and set that back to one and then we can add in custom LUTs right here here's our custom LUT slot and then here's gonna be our strength so if I go ahead and navigate into my LUTs all right and I'm gonna go ahead and throw in one of my joker LUTs here that I kind of got from some free website many years ago clearly look here now if I grab my strength and you can see we are adding in the LUT here I can control the strength of that LUT it doesn't show up too too strong here it's not really a strong let let me go ahead and throw in another one here here's another one. Oh, this one's really showing up nicely here we got the blue so here it is without and then here it is 100 and there it is like you can add your own custom light straight into the viewport if you want now when you render this it's not going to be baked into it let me go ahead and render this really quickly and oh my bad it actually is baked into your render i did not know that because one i always do all my color grading inside of davinci resolve so i really never ever do any light and burning different color profiles in my viewport in my render if you guys want to learn more about blender octane take a look at this video here this is going to be lesson number one in my free blender octane guide and if you're really into it you maybe want to jump into our seven day free trial at our blender octane school if you like it you can stay if you don't like it hey peace out we'll see you in the next one